Paul, as, as a president of organization in a, in a leadership role, how do you take what you've learned about SEL and train your staff on these principles? And um, what organizational supports and considerations are important um, in terms of the professional development and training? Yeah. Um, I'm going to take those separately, right, because okay. they're very different things. Yes. One is that uh, who we hire is really important mm -hmm. um, uh, in so many ways, right? In our organization, I'll speak specifically about our organization because it's important. The one thing you have to bring to the table with us is theater skills because we can't teach you that, right? If you can't direct a show and you haven't seen a lot of theater and you don't understand it, we can't, we can't teach you that. Everything else we can teach. That's one. Two is uh, around the character of the people um, who work for us. We need to know that they're committed to young people and they actually like young people, right? I know that sounds crazy, but we meet a lot of people who are like, they don't even like young people. What are they doing working with them, right? Um, and we would go even further and say they have to be passionate about social change, right? And social justice um, with our young people. Um, so uh, we have a bit of a story around this. We have a lot of stories. That's our trade, right? Um, which is that when we first began bringing in artistic directors to lead our programs, other than me, because I was the only one in the beginning, um, we hired off of paper, right? Someone had a graduate degree, this, that, and the other thing. We hired them. It was a disaster, right? Because it, it told us nothing about the, their experience with young people and their ability to lead and all these things that actually uh, matter once you get in the room with young people. Um, so then we... Uh, we, as we began to grow, we noticed that the people who were succeeding with us were people who started with, with us as volunteers. So now the way we hire is if you want to lead one of our programs, you have to be an assistant director for at least one year, preferably two. The first year is a volunteer, and the second year is, uh, you get a stipend. And then the third year, you can step up and be an artistic director, right? Which gives us two years of training. Um, and inside of that, besides going through the process of assisting someone, uh, you're also having meetings every two weeks with the artistic director and or me, training and learning the project sequence, looking at all of the outcomes and all of the things that we do, including all the infor informal stuff we do, what we refer to as our approach, somewhat pretentiously. Um, and then we throw a lot of books at them, right? Uh, the field guide gets added to the list. The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk around trauma-informed care. Improv by Keith Johnstone, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Paul Kivel, Helping Teens uh, Stop Violence, things like that. Um, and, and then, most importantly, what we ask them to do is, is to digest all of that and make it their own. That if, if they're in the room, they have to speak authentically, honestly, or the teenagers are going to know that they're lying. Right? And if they know that they're lying or giving them a formula, they're done. They've lost all credibility with them. Right? So that's a tall order and takes some time. And the people who do it are very special. And the people that, that I work with who lead our programs are very special people. Um, and they're not special because of us. They're special because of who they are. Um, and then once, we've, once they're in with us, the supports we give them, um, one, we can't give them a lot of money because we're a nonprofit. Right? So we try to give them everything else. Right? Which is, one, uh, we try to give them flexibility. But they get to kind of manage their schedules, right, as long as they're getting the job done. Now, that requires more management from those overseeing them. So, like, I have to work harder to keep them doing their thing, but it's better for them. Um, the other thing we do is, is that we define reflection time as work. So if they're saying, I need to stay home and think through things, that's okay with us because that's part of the work. We get involved deeply with our young people, and we're talking about some very serious things in their lives. Abuse, uh, racism, sexism, these are powerful forces that destroy lives. And our young people have experienced them, right? Something like 70-some percent of our young people have been the victims of violence by the time they're 16, right? Um, so we're hearing those stories. We're working with them on those things, right? Trying to reinterpret those stories, understand what they even mean, right? and then figure out how to share those stories in a way that's meaningful for other people. Um, and therefore, if we're asking our, our adults to partner with them, they're empathizing with all of that, and it is hard on them. And they need time to process it, and they need time to take care of themselves. So we give them that time. We give them a lot of vacation. They get more vacation than anybody I know, right? Like the equivalent of a teacher's summer, uh, because it's exhausting work. And everyone says to me, you know, well, couldn't you get more out of them? And my answer is no. Or more importantly, I could get more out of them for a shorter period of time, like two or three years, and then they're like, I'm done. I need to take a break. I need to do something else that isn't so draining. Whereas Elizabeth Howard's been with us for 12 years. Kelly Claus was with us for eight years. Kenny has been with us for five years. Megan's been with us. This is her fourth year, all right? 
These people have stuck with it, and they do remarkable work, and they take on, right, as it were, all this stuff that young people are dealing with, and part of the reason why is because they get to take care of themselves. So um, those are just some of the things that we do. Yeah. Um, oh, the other one, too, is just around expectations, right? Like we, you know, when they do a good job, we say, great job. You know, we, when they do a good job, we don't say, well, you could do better, right? right? Uh, we manage expectations and have real, realistic expectations about it. Now, what's important to know about that, part of the reason we're able to do that is because I did that job, right? So I know how hard it can be, and I know what can be achieved. I, I'm very good at what I do. I was excellent at what I do, but so are they, right? So we need to call it what it is, uh, and that's a really important thing. So I'm not going to show